What's up y'all, it's Moosh here and today I want to talk about things that you need to know before moving for the Disney College program. So as you like and subscribe to this video, let's get right to it. So if you've already got into the Disney College program, chances are you're looking through 50,000 YouTube videos about the program and also looking up information for Disney's new housing, which is Flamingo Crossing Village. Um, I got to live there. Um, so for Flamingo Crossing, um, there's going to be three types of rooms. There's going to be the 4x4, four four, the 4x2, four and the 2x2. Two two. So the 4x4, four four, it's going to be 4 bedroom, 4 bath, 4x2, four 4 bedroom, 2 bath, 2x2, two 2 two bedrooms, um, 2 bathrooms. Now these apartments for the Disney College program at Flamingo are going to be fully furnished. So you're going to have all your furniture in there and a smart TV. The kitchen is also going to have appliances um, like microwaves and stoves and they're going to have like bare bone amounts of plates, pots and pans that you can use to cook. I recommend going in and buying some extra stuff because you're probably going to need it. For me, having an air fryer was a lifesaver. So for the beds, um, at the apartments, if you're living in a 2x2, two two, your bed's going to be a twin XL. If you're living in a 4x2 four or a 4x4, four four, your bed is going to be a full XL. You're also going to have transportation provided by Disney to go to work and also the resorts. And also, I think after I left the program, they added Disney Springs to it too. So now that you have some basic information about uh, Flamingo Crossing, it's important to note that your rent is going to be taken out of your paycheck every single week. Um, Disney does guarantee you the exact amount of hours you need to cover your rent, but anything other than that, they don't guarantee. So a lot of times when people are coming into the program, how many hours you're getting is entirely dependent on your role. Some people like me, when I was working at Pecos Bill, I was averaging 60 hours a week. Some people might average barely 30 hours a week. So some people are literally living paycheck to paycheck, barely paying their rent. And also the rent, since my program has also increased something to keep into consideration. Flamingo Crossing is extremely new, so the rent is a lot higher than what you would typically be paying around the area. If you don't want to live at Flamingo Crossing, you can also opt out of it and live in an apartment that you find yourself. In my opinion, if you know that you're not going to be staying at Disney for your entire career or if you're planning on going back to school after your program ends, I recommend staying at Flamingo Crossing because it's convenient, it's a short-term lease, and also you have the bus transportation if you don't have a car to take you places within the Disney bubble. If you're planning on staying at Florida and you're planning to work at Disney after your program ends, it's much more easier to just get an apartment and honestly, you're saving a lot more money and you have much more time over yourself because of the security, there's a lot of visitation rules and there's a lot of limitations inside Flamingo also. Although one of the biggest upsides of staying in your own place and opting out of housing is that you're saving money and you have your own place and that's not on Disney property, living at Flamingo has its perks too. For example, they have a really nice pool and a hot tub. They have like a lot of cool events where you can go meet characters on your days off if you're in your apartment. They have like little fun programs where they give out free food. It's also easier to meet people that are doing the program. So like literally I will walk out when my first time uh, when the program started and I could just meet people because everyone was new and they were just trying to make friends So if you're wanting to find that community inside Disney with other interns It's a lot easier living at Flamingo than it is when you're living in your apartment That way a lot of my friends that opted out of Disney housing They made most of their friends through work Whereas those living at Flamingo It was a lot easier to meet people because you're just surrounded by everyone that's going through the same thing sometimes they're working just as many hours as you and you kind of trauma bond, which is funny. Some of my closest friends are still the people that I met during my DCP and that I worked with. I literally go visit them all the time. I went during spring break and I'm planning on going back again in August just to visit them too. Um, if you're living at Flamingo, another thing to consider is the roommate situation. Um, when I applied for the program, you had a very short time frame where you could uh, request specific roommates. Um, if you're trying to find roommates, I recommend using the Facebook groups. There's a lot of Facebook groups that are like DCP 2022, DCP Fall Advantage. You can go into and you can meet other people that are doing the program or people that have previously done the program. You can go into group chats and meet people and have conversations with them to see if you're a good fit and if you want to request each other to be roommates. If not, you can also do the random roommate process. I did that. I ended up loving my roommates. Some people have had negative experiences, but for me, I'm one of my closest friends. 
during my program and literally I talk to him almost every other day right now. Um, so it just depends. Some people get really lucky like me with the roommates, some people don't. But if you want to, you can also request them. If you go into the Facebook websites and join different group meets, it makes it a lot easier to meet people and see potential roommates or potential people you might want to hang out with during the program too. So that way you're getting to know people even before you get to the program. Another thing to remember for me was when I was going to Florida, um, you get your itinerary 10 to 20 days before your program starts. So for me, when I went there, I got there a day before my program was going to start and I was going to check into Flamingo Crossing because my check-in was around 9 a.m. and my flight got there the day before late at night. So I got a hotel the night before, I slept there, and then in the morning I took all my stuff and I went to Flamingo. So that's something to consider too. If you're going to fly to Flamingo, um, I recommend getting there a day before, getting in an Airbnb and getting a hotel and staying there. So yeah, y'all, uh, that's a little short little video about what to know before moving to Disney for your internship. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I hope you have an amazing day.